compliments of the season and welcome to the gavel. I'm Terry Ikumi. Parliament is on a brief break for the Christmas festivities, but will return on Wednesday to pass the 2023 budget. That will be three days before the end of the year, so the question is, will the President be able to thoroughly scrutinize the amendments made to the appropriation bill and sign it within three days to maintain the January to December budget cycle? Recall that last year the budget was signed on the 31st of December. Well, this week on the gavel will begin with the House of Representatives. It was quite eventful for members of the House, who went from insisting that the central bank governor must appear before them, to finally accepting that he could be represented by the deputy governor, Aisha Ahmed. And that's eventually what happened. Mrs. Aisha Ahmed briefed the lawmakers on the new Naira notes and the cash withdrawal policy of the Apex Bank. Here's a detailed report of how that interaction went. On Thursday, lawmakers in the House of Representatives received the representative of the Central Bank Governor, Aisha Ahmed, who is in charge of financial system stability. Mrs. Aisha Ahmed was at the National Assembly to brief members of the House on the new monetary policies of the CBN involving the redesign of the Naira notes and the cash withdrawal limits. It is in re to reduce cash processing costs, cash minting costs, processing costs, ca the, the cost of destroying old notes and the cost of moving the cash from place to place, the physical cost of protecting it. The data available to us shows that 94% of all transactions, cash transactions, fall below the 500,000 limit. And this includes in areas in the country that are predominantly um, cash, that are not part of the cashless um, policy. 82% of corporate transactions also are below this limit. What does this mean? It means that 94% of all individual transactions will not be affected. Lawmakers questioned the proximity of the policies to the elections and why Parliament was not carried along in the processes leading up to the final decision. We are about facing the general election. Thank you. And uh, let me just re-echo one line. Are you not seeing it as an opportunity for the ruling party to reach Thank out you to very much. parties? At no time do we make decisions based on any political considerations. And I think it's important that I understate that. Is the CBN governor not aware of the provisions of the act with regards to his statutory obligation to address the National Assembly semi-annually? That is two times minimum in a year. If the CBN was aware of this provision of the law, how come the CBN, before even going public, with this policy did not brief the house we remain open to continue to engage um, and do better when the house convenes these hearings it is the responsibility of us to show up and we look forward to to you doing so this policy also affects the progress made in diaspora remittances which currently stands at 20 billion dollars some of these remittances are channeled through mobile money agents serving Nigerians who are excluded from the banking system. Take that in, um, on notice, please. And then also note that thousands of mobile money and bank agents operate outside the city centers and do not have access to digital or electronic banking. And they will be seriously impacted with, by this policy. On the 8th of December, this association wrote to Central Bank of Nigeria. They are yet to receive any response from you and therefore have petitioned the National Assembly. I believe that the revised limits that we have and the revised circular that we sent actually takes the agents into consideration. Silence, please. Silence, please. Please resume your seats. And from the data that we receive from agents themselves, in terms of the transaction size that they are operating at. The average transaction size at an agent location is less than 2.5 million naira. So they will not be affected. I don't want to interrupt you. I think it's also important to mention okay, that the reason why we have agents today is due to 
the policies of the CBN around cashless, because that was what spurred the innovation and the investment in that channel. Legislators pressed further on the new currency in circulation. Mr. Speaker, the CBN must note the restrict people choices through coercion of a policy for their own good. Mr. Speaker, can the CBN tell Nigerians how much was printed out of this new currency? How much was printed? Why did I ask that question? Because today, if you jump into the bank and you want to withdraw money, the money is not available. I'm sorry, I'm not able to share that figure now because, and only because I want to give an accurate number. The CBN, however, says it has ordered the printing of more 500 Naira notes. We received uh, uh, the earlier decision that he appears on um, Wednesday. Outside the chamber, the House Committee Chairman on Defence appraises the interaction. I was impressed with her. She gave a good account of herself. She said Nigeria is the sixth um, ranked sixth in electronic payment, which is uh, very, very remarkable. However, she falls short on some areas. Um, Section 8, I think, of the Central Bank Act says that they must interact with the National Assembly on very key um, 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 monetary matters like this. They didn't, because the National Assembly represents 360 federal constituencies. They feel the pain and pinches of uh, everybody within their constituency. So they didn't really make that mark, you know. So um, the policy is very good, we all agree with it, but the only issue we have is with the timing. Um, she also sort of said that Nigeria has 60 million BVNs, right? A uh, population of 200 million. What happens to the people who don't have BVN? We asked her that question. She said they can make use of um, e, uh, some codes. Um, agent banking, and I don't think that is um, good enough. You know, the UK has introduced some new um, currencies as well, uh, the King's Charles the currency. They've said it should run till 2024, Paris pursue with their old currency. So I think we should be looking at that and considering the fact that UK, like Mr. Speaker said, is a cashless society. They've also given a year's um, 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 latitude. Right, where a cash full country, like the speaker said, and we're giving just a, a few weeks, so I think it's unfair. And above all, I was driving to my constituency the other day, uh, which is in Ikorodu. I was listening to the community radio, and the people calling into that program were peasants, were small scale, they were all complaining about this. Um, policy that is supposed to be helping them, making them more inclusive. So I think a lot of um, strategic communication also needs to be done. That is extremely lacking. So above all, the idea is good. We believe Nigeria should be cashless, but in a logical, uh, sequential manner. It is not clear what position the House would take after this interaction, considering that it had asked the CBN to suspend the cash withdrawal policy. Well, let's stay with the House of Representatives and find out what else lawmakers were up to in this past week. Especially the good news to broadcasters. The passage of the bill for an act to regulate the practice of the broadcasting profession in Nigeria and establish the Society of Nigerian Broadcasters. Take a listen. The House of Representatives is concerned about the whistleblower policy of the federal government linked to an alleged illegal sale of 48 million barrels of Nigeria's Bonnie Light crude in 2015. Aware of allegations by a whistleblower in July 2020 that he had in July 2015 and in response to the current administration's whistleblower's policy brought to the attention of a committee purportedly set up by Mr. President for the recovery of missing crude oil exports, the existence of 48 million barrels of Nigeria's burning light crude oil in storage at several ports in China, ostensibly under the authorization of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, and uh, the intention of parties in China and the NFPC to sell this particular cargo. Also aware, Mr. Speaker, that the whistleblower claimed that the committee which comprised very high-ranking officials of the administration and NNPC, 
carried out an investigation and confirmed the existence of this cargo. But he discovered in October 15 that the sale of this cargo had been initiated through unofficial channels and the eventual refusal of the committee to honor the existing agreement of 5% value on the cargo. Worried by the allegations that the entire cargo of 48 million barrels of burning light crude was sold without the proceeds being remitted to the coffers of the country, we translated a loss to the Nigerian state of over 2.4 billion US dollars. Considering the 2015 global average crude oil of $52 per barrel. The committee is also to investigate the proceeds recovered through the whistleblower policy and the level of compliance to the policy. Everything is on course as discussed. On Wednesday, lawmakers raised concerns about the returned artifacts from Germany and urged its Committee on Culture to investigate the details surrounding stolen and returned artifacts in the country. I agree with the German foreign minister in her statement that it was wrong for them to have taken them and even worse to have kept them, hence the gradual return of this artifact to their places of origin. It is also on record that in July this year, Germany returned two of this priceless artifact to Nigeria and have in the last few days returned over 20 more pieces of the valuable artifact. Uh, leader, that, yes. We... Conscious that having accused foreign nations of looting and keeping our treasured artifact, we cannot be seen of doing the same to the return artifact without sending them to their places of Minority origin leader. in Nigeria. Result, mandate the House Committee on Culture and Tourism to liaise with the Ministry of Information and Culture and the National Council for Museum and Monument on Memorandum and Understanding and angry Agreement made on this artifact. Two, inventory of all actual already returned to Nigeria and yet to be returned. Three, ensure that appropriate plans are made to return this actual to places they were looted from with strategies to conserve and preserve this actual at those original locations, also palaces. Four, urge the federal government to officially gather this um, actual appropriately. Meanwhile, the House is amending the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act to increase the penalties for female genital mutilation. The bill has scaled second reading and will be subjected to a public hearing. The penalty before was four years, okay? Now I'm trying to raise the bar to five years. Then in neither times, the penalty before was... No, just, uh, I, no, we're not going to go to the debate yet. I just wanted to know. I know. Okay. So four to five years. And then 200,000. Now we are raising it to 1 million. Okay. Four to five years, 200 to 1 million. Yes. In the meantime, a major highlight from Wednesday's plenary session from the point of view of Nigerian broadcasters is the passage of the bill for an act to regulate the practice of the broadcasting profession in Nigeria. The bill seeks the establishment of the Society of Nigerian Broadcasters. <laughs> Welcome back to the gavel. Let's go over to the Senate now. The upper chamber has faulted the revocation and wrongful reallocation of the Atala OML 46 and ordered that it should be reallocated to its original owners, just as ordered or directed by the president earlier. Also, the passage of the 2023 budget was postponed to Wednesday, the 28th December, because of problems discovered in the budget, and that's according to the Senate president. The Senate has faulted the revocation and wrongful reallocation of the Atala OML 46 operated by the Bayelsa Oil Company Limited. This is as the upper chamber ordered the commission to reallocate the oil field to original owners as earlier directed by the presidency. The Senate's resolutions are sequel to recommendations made to that effect by its Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions. This recommendation is in line with the presidential directive, which is applied in returning the nine marginal fields to the original owners and operators. That in the same way, the reward process did not follow due process and was contrary to the presidential directive in rewarding the 10 revoked marginal fields, consideration be given to the original operators. This not being the case, the committee noted with concern. A, that the Nigeria Office of Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRUC, or Department of Petroleum Research, BTPR, as the case may be, did not invite Hardy Oil Limited 
Baesa Oil Company Limited and Century Exploration and Production Limited to bid for a reaward as directed by the President of the Nation and the Minister of Petroleum Resources. Therefore, the action of DPRU contravenes Mr. President's directives and negate the principle of fairness, equity, and justice. While supporting the committee's recommendations, other lawmakers made some reservations over the wrongful reallocation of Atala Marginal Oil Field. Mine is just to portray the fact that these are the what the president, Mr. Chairman, has presented. It's just the fact, and nothing but the fact. And therefore, I want to urge the Senate to approve this very unambiguous recommendation by the committee chairman. Bayesa has a company that is interested in, the, in this. This, uh, the, the BOCL, this uh, uh, the Atala oil field should be returned in line with the other nine so that, that the, uh, the, the, uh, the Niger Delta region, especially uh, Bayesa states, should not be restive. Since the revocation of the Atala marginal field OML 46 was based on misleading information supplied by Hurricane Exploration and Production Limited, and secondly, since NUPRC was unable to produce written evidence that Mr. President uh, Muhammad Buhari GCFR, who is also the Minister of Petroleum Resources, actually reversed his initial directive on the consideration of honors operators of Atala Marginal Field for the award, as claimed by Representative NUPRC, Dr. Kelechi of Egbu, at a public hearing. The committee therefore strongly recommends that the Atala Marginal Field OML 46 be returned to its original owners operators in line with presidential directive which was, which was applied in returning the other nine marginal fields to their original owners operators. Those in favor of this recommendation say aye. aye. Those against say nay the ayes have. President Muhammad Buhari has forwarded an 819.5 billion naira supplementary budget for the 2022 fiscal year to the National Assembly to fix infrastructure destroyed by floods across the country. In two separate letters read by the Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives, President Buhari explains that the supplementary budget is to address food security following devastating floods across the country, as well as damages to road and water infrastructure. The year 2022 has witnessed the worst flood incidents in recent history, which has caused massive destruction of farmlands at a point already close to harvest season. This may compound the situation of food security and nutrition in the country. The flood also devastated the road infrastructure across the 36 states and the FCT that affected several sections of major roads and bridges nationwide that are critical for movement of goods and services. The nine critical projects proposed in the sector cut across water supply, dam projects and irrigation projects nationwide. I have therefore approved a supplementary 2022 appropriation of 819 billion 536 million 937 thousand 813 naira, all of which are capital expenditure. The supplementary will be financed through additional domestic borrowings. This will raise the budget deficit for 2022 to 8.17 trillion naira and deficit to GDP ratio to 4.43. Meanwhile, the Senate had slated Thursday, December 22nd, to pass the 2023 national budget. But that was not to be, as the Senate President, Senator Ahmed Lawan, announced that the budget will be passed next Wednesday, December 28th, because of inherent problems. He did not, however, give details of what the problems were. The main reason for this is because the appropriation bill came to the National Assembly with some problems. And when our committees on appropriation in the Senate and the House started to reconcile the figures of what we have done and what was presented, the problems became very obvious and they were not easy to deal with 
and therefore our committees had to start a process of cleaning up the, the bill first. That process, of course, also engaged the executive arm because uh, the problem came from there. President Buhari had sent a 19.76 trillion Naira 2023 budget to the National Assembly in October for consideration and passage. The Senate devoted more than a month to holding budget defense sessions with heads of government ministries, departments and agencies. The Senate. Immediately after plenary, the Senate Finance Committee held an interactive session with heads of government agencies on the finance bill. The finance minister explained that the bill has various policy areas geared towards tax equity reforms, climate change, job creation and economic growth. In the area of tax equity reforms, we have provisions for combating tax evasion and aggressive tax planning and also provisions for ensuring on the tax or not tax sectors that are to be brought into the tax net in line with excellent laws and regulations. The president of the Nigeria Labour Congress hailed the section of the bill which provides that local governments are allocated 35% share of the electronic money transfer levy receipts. But he's worried about the implication of the 10% tax on carbonated drinks. We have met with manufacturers all, including NECA, uh, including the Workers' Union, including those uh, manufacturing industries. So they gave us two analyses. Is one, if you impose that tax, what they will do is actually to transfer it to the consumers, which means the cost of the products will go high, and basically it would also affect all of us. The second option they gave us is that they can also do like Macheline and uh, Dunlop to also go to South Africa, and they gave us an analogy, and we sympathize with them. There is actually the issue of high cost of doing business in Nigeria. On power alone, when I look at their books, sir, Nigeria is where they spend more in production. The finance bill also proposes that the income of all companies engaged in gaming and lottery businesses shall be taxable under the provisions of the Company Income Tax Act, which applies to all companies registered in Nigeria. Now, just before we go, the Senate has confirmed Mrs. Loretta Onoche and 12 other nominees as chairperson and members of the board of the Niger Delta Development Commission. And that's all the time we have on the gavel from the entire crew. Happy holidays. I'm Terry Ikumi. Goodbye.